Okay, would you rather eat your big toe or your pinky finger? I feel like my to- my big toe I could pretend was a chicken wing. I think you'd. I think most of it would be fighting against your instincts to back. Stop it! Stop! Wait, 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 wait! We're not chopping them off first. No, you're just like. What? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, friends! We're back with another week of merriment, and you may notice this more relaxed tone in our voices this episode. We're literally sitting in reclining positions this time. I know, it's a dramatic move, but things were starting to get stale. We needed a change. We tried new things in pursuit of a good time. You can't blame us. This week, we are playing Johnny's version of Would You Rather, which is always the worst. We talk about the difference between sibling fights and bullying, huge difference, and discuss the best and worst poops in the animal kingdom, because, of course, it's something you always think about. You'll also hear our take on the ethics of breastfeeding in public, from my opinion, and should you look a breastfeeding mom in the eye? What age should we breastfeed our children to? Side note, are human babies a different species? Find out our take on all those things in the next hour as you sit back, relax, and join the merriment. Coming to you live from the for, from uh, the house of the, the living room of the Jansons. Living, the Jansons living room is the Merry Men podcast <sighs> with your host Carly <laughs> Jansen, featuring special musical guest Johnny Jansen, <laughs> and your host Carly Jansen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey everybody! Hey hey! <sighs> How's it going? How's it going? <sighs> Wow. Oh, so good to be wow, here. So wow. good to be here. Johnny, Johnny, you look speech, great. Speech, 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 <laughs> speech, speech, speech. Uh, uh, speech therapy coming speech. at you right speech. here. Give me a speech. Hmm. Uh, well, I have to say this Mother's Day was phenomenal, and you you blew all other dads out of the water. <sighs> Yeah, way to go, Johnny! Way to go. Yeah, celebrate! Yep, yep Johnny did it. And I gotta it. say, it's uh, you made it easy by being a great mom. <sighs> <laughs> wow, very good show we got started already. Yeah, Off on wow. the right foot, we're just so many cheers, so many cheers, so much applause, so much to be cheerful about. You did do a really wonderful <coughs> Mother's Day, though. Thanks, honey. Yeah, you made me feel really special. Good. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was the plan. Now I can just be like. All right, birthday and Father's Day. I know, right? right up. This is great, actually. The <laughs> timing of this is perfect because it's Mother's Day and then your birthday comes up like a week later. Yep. And so then I'm just like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta just spoil Johnny. Oh, like I bet crazy. I don't, I don't like that. What, what's but it, like what's not in it? No, but not in like a oh no, I have to kind of way. But like oh, I'm so compelled because you treated right. me so well. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, no pressure. That's that's the one thing about I'm not a big fan of with birthdays as an adult is uh i just i I don't i don't i don't like gifts i i do but i don't like the idea of gifts i don't like the pressure of it right yeah i don't like the expectation of getting a gift and i don't like buying people gifts well i do i i I do when it's last minute when i'm like oh and there's like a rush and you're like you know there's a time limit you're good at that rush it's like the, the music's it. playing, dun, 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 yeah. dun, and you're just like, oh man. Yeah, Home Alone style. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I um, yeah, it's weird because I can't. I was talking about this with somebody recently when I, I could have months in advance to think of something for somebody, and my mind will just be blank. But if it's like less than a day before, I'll just have so many ideas. That's great because at least it's not like a day after that you have all the ideas that feels like it's that, that happens to me a lot yeah yeah more it's with karaoke kind of like when you when somebody's been mean to you and you think of the perfect thing to say <laughs> right after you know like a day later but yeah. instead you're like yeah well ugh, you smell no you i think about that all the time that happens to me i, th- I feel like that happens to me regularly no uh, no but there's just sometimes when you have an all something happens I, I don't think it's anything malicious it's more just like oh that would have been a great pun hmm. or like oh that would have been a great thing to say yeah or like a great comeback or a great, great comeback, rebuttal something mm-hmm. or yeah or so yeah. clever i would have been clever so clever if i came up with this right then if i come up with this really clever thing to say at that moment of time oh man you just like wake up in the you, middle of the night just ah! or you know what i do sometimes i when i Oh, what? like I'm riding my bike or something or like I in my mind I'm imagining somebody 
calling me out or you know shouting at me or something and then i'll be like well if they do that i'm gonna do this and then you just hope that it happens to you yeah or like (laughs) if i if i get into a fight or somebody tries to mug me i'm like i'm gonna do this but then like oh man it's all it's all circumstantial and those circumstances just never come up yeah like i'll cave or Mm. something like i forget the other day this it like i'll cave if it does come up and i'll crumple in a little ball Mm. Like the, I was coming off the sky train the other day and this big guy, I was waiting in line um, or just waiting for the elevator to come down with my bike. And this guy comes and he was drunk. He was like this big homeless guy. And then I just like my heart's beating. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then it opens. He's like, out of my way. And like in the biggest, deepest voice possible, I was like, oh no. And I was back away and he moves away and I was so scared. But then after I was just like, how dare he <laughs> and then i was just like and what did like later brave johnny think about it um i don't know i just thought less of i thought less of like a cowardly like oh yes sir and uh, more of like excuse me you know what i mean no but that i probably wouldn't have never said that but you were just like m- a little more indignant after yeah, the fact like just be like Ugh, you know the nerve he the had. The nerve that guy had. But in reality, <laughs> I was just like, please don't mug me. Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. That happened to me on the sky train, too. There's this big kind of scary, sketchy dude. And I was and I was just like nervous that he was going to come after me and steal my bike. And I was so nervous until I got on my bike and rode away. I was like, thank goodness. Or anytime somebody comes in the in the elevator with me, I'm like, oh, no. Like today, there's another guy who came in the elevator with me and then he was reaching his backpack and I was like, Oh no, he's for sure going to pull out a knife. I have and, totally and ra- had that before where you're just watching somebody. And you're like, they're, they're going to pull out a gun. Yeah. And, you know, and why do we, why would we actually think that's going to happen? Well, the stories that I've heard, it's happened to some people that I know, like my, one of my friends, he was on the phone with his mom and just like in gas town in the middle of the day. And then a guy grabs his phone and then another guy swoops in front of him and punches him right in the face as the other guy runs in the way. And they're like, don't, don't. And then he's just like, oh. and then he's just basically just like, you, you, to, if you chase after him, you have to fight me first. Yeah. And then it's like that. They like, apparently there's Holy groups crap. of guys that do that. They just find people on their phones in an alleyway, just like what? steal and then punch him in the it's face. It's funny because like, I know there've been times where I felt a little bit sketched out. And so I would call somebody. Ooh. You know, when when you're, you know what I mean? You're just like, oh, well, I'm on the phone with somebody. So there's some accountability. Like my right. people know where I am. And you're not, it's not like when you get your phone stolen, you are harmed in any way. So at least, you know. Unless they punch you in the face. That's true. Yeah, no, that's that's harm yeah. for Man, sure. Man, I really, I really hope I never get mugged or anything. Punched that... in the face? Have you ever been punched in the face? No, maybe. Never? Yes, Kevin, my friend Kevin punched me in the face. What? um kevin yeah when we were it was just like like childhood like uh, like maybe in the chin a oh yeah bit. i think me and daniel were and he was he had to like it's not kevin Dreger. yeah oh when you, you guys were kids together like preteens oh or teen young teenagers mm-hmm. and he there was snow day and they were he was shoveling the snow and me and daniel were just like being less like so frustrating for him <laughs> <laughs> and then he was just like had it and then just swung at me and oh, it man. was it was it wasn't like oh we're fighting now it was it's like, like a go away type of swing yeah but it was like oh there's a punch yeah it's just like technically that was a fist in my face so you could call that a punch yeah. other than that like no i have been face washed too many times to count oh by like snow, in the snow which is not a punch but you know no. what it still freaking hurts yeah I it it does it's just like cold, but for the person who's doing it, because I've done it, and does your hand get cold? Oh, I no. guess it depends on if you're wearing if gloves. you're wearing gloves. Yeah, but it's more funny. It's like, oh yeah, you're getting your face. But I guess <laughs> there's it, something about being face washed. Like when snow, if you don't know what fa- face washing is, like somebody grabs a handful of snow and just like shoves it in your face and rubs it around. Rude. There's something that's like so violating about it. My yeah. brother used to do it, and I just felt so mad. Well, because they have to just like pin you down. And then they're in control of your whole body. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like complete overpowering. It's like, wow, you 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 need to be in power of somebody else is what's going on here. <laughs> oh, man. I do. Yeah, that happened to me. My brother used to pin me down 
and then like kind of you know how you spit and then suck it back <gasps> up He'd oh do that man to my face. yeah i remember i remember here man kids kids are so so yeah. weird like that they just yeah. the things that kids do to each other like my my brother i love my brother so much but you know he was one of those kids that just thought it was hilarious to see what happened when he just pestered other kids oh yeah and I every other kid every kid handled it differently like my sister really my younger sister really didn't like it no but my brother and i still pester each other and yeah but it. did you ever face wash him Oh yeah, no, I totally really? did. I remember one time I smacked him and ran away, and because I had gotten to the point where I was faster than him, and so he couldn't catch me, and he was so mad. And oh, also, man. yeah, it got to a point where, like, for a while there, he was able to. He was just always the winner, but then I started to win, and then things got more interesting. So I just, and then you know, I'd like, smack oh. him, and then I'd look at him, and I'd have this really like snarky little like grin on my face like ha 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 oh, wow. come try and catch me and wow and, and then he probably was just like i have more respect for my young sister oh, he now. loved it he loved it. that was that's like the truth playing together that, i gotta say that's the truth for anybody who's like an antagonizer it's if you're being antagonized it's up to you to to get them back somehow to kind of gain their trust this isn't for every case but yeah like I some think, antagonizers are like my brother where they're doing it because this is how they play yeah but then there are other people who it's just purely like a power thing and they just want to overpower you and it's yeah and they don't like it when you fight back i haven't really just win. i haven't really encountered many people like that most of the time it's been like that but those are the true bullies brother, i think some, yeah and it's so funny it's like it's a lot of time it is up to you if you're being antagonized to make that decision if they're going to be the bad guy or not mm -hmm. with how you react. Like or if like you're, if you're going to be the victim. Yeah, exactly. Like if you're going to be teased, if you like, I, I know for sure I was totally t a tattletale for a while on my brother and I kind of turned him into the bad boy. Whereas if I probably would have played his games, mm -hmm. I would have probably been like, oh yeah, he's cool. You know, like yeah. I probably <laughs> like eye for an eye type thing. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's a really good lesson to learn for a lot of people, like a lot of kids too. It's valuable to learn it when you're really young. But I do think there are some people that are just more sensitive than others, that that is so, so hard for them to get into that headspace. They're just so sensitive that it always feels like it's just antagonizing. Yeah. You yeah, know, like I, my I sister, she's she's really sensitive. And so when my brother would do these things to her, it just hurt her. Yeah. And it's funny because for me my antagonizing is more like arguing like i love i love being the devil's advocate mm -hmm. no matter what um yeah especially with stupid games like would you rather i love <laughs> just like really and we we're playing with with her and she's like i feel i feel like you're attacking me and i was kind of but then it was like antagonizing right yeah, yeah it, it was just like no you're wrong but it was so oh, the that is thing. the worst when you say that but it's but i find it so funny when it's like what would you rather do? Eat a bag of hair or swallow like a shot glass of 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 uh, s spit like goobers? And then you have to just like I love oh, picking the picking the other side and be like, well, have you thought about this? Ew, like, that's no, so gross. No, wrong. why don't why don't you come up with like would you rather's that they still take a lot of thought, but they're not so freaking disgusting. Like, would you rather sit for an entire day with twelve marshmallows in your mouth? And you don't get to brush your teeth at the end of the night. Or would you rather sit to have a nose hair plucked every five minutes for an entire day? Nose hair. Nose hairs? Yeah. I'm so every five minutes, somebody's going to stop whatever you're doing while you're trying to work. Every single thing that you're ever doing when you're trying to track on something. Okay. You've got this person just being like, hey, hang on, hang on. Dink. And yeah. Like, and what's oh. the other one? Uh, having 12 marshmallows in your mouth for the entire day and you can't brush your teeth at oh, the end of the sure, day. Oh, for sure, the nose hair. You know why? Why? I like the feeling of nose nose hairs being plucked in mm -hmm. my nose. You know what? I think that the, um, the marshmallow one sounds really terrible to me because... It's the worst. Your teeth would your teeth would start hurting. You couldn't eat. That sounds way bad. Let's see, that's that. You wouldn't be able to like swallow balanced, any of the marshmallows. Yeah, that's not a very balanced would you rather. Really? Would well, you rather are you an hard. expert at doing these would you rathers? I am. Because you just do them all the time. See, if we were to play Would You Rather and it was those types of scenarios, I would enjoy it. Just putting that out there. Because every other time that we play Would You Rather, I think just I hate the gross. game. But I just hate the game that you play. <laughs> okay, Would You Rather 
eat your one of your toes or one of your fingers? Eat? Well, obviously the toes are smaller. Eat your big toe or your pinky finger? My big toe or my pinky finger? <laughs> why why, why am I eat? eating them? Why? Somebody That's has a disgusting. Gun. I'm somebody, not a cannibal. Somebody has a gun to... Do we get to cook pointed, it? No. You just said to, it's pointed towards like your whole family. Like if you don't do this now, we're going to... You're going to... Hmm. People are going to die because of you. I feel like my to- my big toe I could pretend was a chicken wing. Although the toenail would be really hard to get past. I think it would be the pain. I think you'd I think most of it would be fighting against your instincts to be like, stop it. Stop. Wait, 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 wait. We're not chopping them off first? No, you're just like What? Ah. Why? This is the worst. Why do you do these ones? This is so why terrible. Is that bad? Cuz it's so so it, it's like cannibalism. You're eating yourself. That's just What do you mean why is it bad? Why do okay, I have what, to explain what would this you to rather, you? Um every Every time you, I see, I try to. Here, why don't we try? Would you rather in the way that it, each one is really desirable? Which one is more desirable? Ugh, boring. What? You, because you have to come up with great scenarios. What would you rather? How about manifestation, where you actually are thinking about amazing things, and you're like, "Ooh, Ugh. would I rather own an island in the middle of the Pacific that has?" See um, to me. Oh yeah, in the middle of the Pacific that has. Um, 1500 flamingos living on it or would you rather um travel on a yacht for a year um uh, see these rope you in it's not that boring yeah see to me okay um island sure but the like there's no visualization in my mind it's just like yeah those would be nice see this is how i see it it's like what would you, it's the difference between like a comedy club and like a yoga studio. <laughs> what? Those, Comedy's that's the not difference. negative. No, but, but some, or like a, not a yoga studio, just like a, like a, like a spiritual center where everybody's just like talking woo woo. What? These positive, these like just, fun just, listen, to those, dream I'm of I'm trying to compare. Things? Yeah. I'm trying to compare the difference. That's like yoga? But no, but like, you know, like if you go to like a, your woman's night. Mm-hmm, where you're my like, women's oh, retreat. Like, everything's so positive. Let's just like <laughs> only think positive. <laughs> Versus like a comedy night where you're just laughing at everything and you're just like, oh, like that's just like anything. Well, what comedy on the are table. you going to? Doesn't just mean, like no, the people who like, are constantly complaining about the stuff no, they hate. No, it's just like uh, it could be anybody. You can be like a mixed bag of whoever wants to. But what I'm saying is the Woody Rathers are always bad. They're always bad things. That's not always bad. Yes, they are. No, I do one. What would you rather um, be able to? Oh, I, I think the best ones are like. It's good, but ah, there's a price to pay too. Mm, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. would you rather fly, but you're always freezing cold when you fly? Or See, these, these aren't they, they, those are not good. Why is not not good? It's well, just because like, it's it's. But there's more to think about. It's just like oh, well, you know, it's just like oh, that would be good, but there's this downside. The, my favorite one is. It's well, like Aesop's Fables. That's you, you must be a big fan of Aesop's Fables. What would you rather? Um, laugh instead of cry or cry instead of laugh oh i see so like when you are sad you laugh or when you are happy yeah you cry i kind of already cry laughing sometimes no no but it's like (laughs) and you kind of have to leave (laughs) because you're so sad (laughs) but you're not sad you're so happy no but you'd become sad oh man you just have to you you you're like oh oh like something See, these funny are happens. both bad. I just they're not, not bad. They're just they're, they're both more terrible. They're, compli- they're complicated. They're terrible. They're not. No, but what would you rather? See, it makes you think. I Be- just no. It doesn't make me think. It makes me completely repel. I'm just like no. Just think I about don't it. Wanna, no. Would you, why would no, I want to think? Answer about this that? one for me. I put myself in these situations too like vividly. So, imagine so I'm thinking yourself. to myself, sad, and like the saddest <laughs> times, which we've had extremely sad yeah. times this year. And I'm laughing? Yeah. Hell no. That's terrible. Okay, so now you're you're amongst friends and then somebody said this funny thing happens and then you just kill the vibe by just crying. Yeah, they're both bad. <laughs> see, see, this is why I can't see, play I, these versions of I, with you. It's terrible. I love my favorite would you rathers are the hardest ones where you just, it's like, you try to find that balance between like, I don't know which one. And there then, is no balance. They're both no, bad. Then, so at this point you just flip a coin. No, but this is why I like them because when they're so close and it's, there's not an obvious one, then you can have a discussion about it. But and then the discussions are what I like the most 
because then you can just like bring up all these hypotheticals and then it's just opinions and that's and that's when that's when cassie felt attacked because i got so intense about my side okay because you're saying like oh you're wrong whatever. yeah yeah and that see those situations are what i like i love those type of things i know it's i know it's like it's not it's not even about the would you rather game you just want to antagonize people maybe that's it (laughs) (laughs) you just want to see people squirm yeah, no, I, I, I like a health, healthy, I like an absurd debate. I love it when, <laughs> I love it. These are definitely my favorite, absurd debates. My favorite thing is when people get worked up about the silliest things. <laughs> I love that. It's so absurd. I mean, you can be like, look, we're having this stupid discussion and then just getting so into it. I love that stuff. I just can't get into it though because the absurd part of it where I'm just like, this is so stupid that I'm trying to put myself in the situation where I'm actually troubled about thinking about laughing instead of crying or <laughs> crying tra- instead of laughing and I'm getting worked up getting over which one to choose and I'm like applying it theoretically in my head to my life and they both feel terrible and I'm like none of these are gonna happen why am I doing this to myself right huh okay um but what about the islands I mean, the island with the 1,500 flamingos or the yacht for a year. You'd prefer See, to have an island, but you have to. The trick is with the island, I mean, I don't have so to tell boring. you. So boring. I don't have to tell you in the would you rather setup that you need to get to and from your island all the time. It's not like because you have the island, now you have a plane. You still have to get to the island. Yeah, so what? So would you want the island or do you want sell to go it. on a yacht sell for a my year? island sell it just become so rich well what if it's not that accessible and i didn't say how big the island was but it's full of flamingos yeah 1500 so it must be big Mm, they could all be packed in one spot well then a cruise the yacht it wasn't just a cruise it's a yacht oh it's my own yacht yeah well not your own yacht but you're cruising around in a yacht oh i don't think a cruise ship is a yacht well i'd probably get the island is there things on the island? Like, is there a house? There's no houses. No, you have to... Camp? Uh, yeah. Yacht. Or, like, build your own shelter. Yacht. Yeah, see? You said island to start off with. You didn't even delve into the details. Okay. But then we delved in, and I was like, yacht. <laughs> okay, well... It wasn't a hard decision. It's like, hey, but what would you like to like have? A hot decisions. dog or a hamburger? Like, oh, a hot dog. <laughs> but the hot dog has dirty meat in it. Okay, hamburger. Maybe I just don't that's get this what, would you rather game then. I feel like I need to play this game with somebody else. But okay, okay, what this is what would you this is the one that we got a, in a debate. I remember with with Cassie was what would you rather be blind or deaf? Oh, I hate that one. What? Easy. Easy, deaf. Easy, but okay, this is one because you said she was wrong, but it completely comes down to <laughs> she every was person's wrong. every person's no, no, personal no, 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 no. experience. In this case, she was wrong. <laughs> You're so bigoted sometimes. I'm, uh, yeah, maybe. No, I'm not. I'm not bigoted. Uh, Only towards people who think differently would rather than be, you. D- yeah. <laughs> yes. In, in that case, I'm bigoted. If you, you know, I'm not bigoted until you think differently than me, then I am. This sometimes. is definitely the opener to this podcast. <laughs> is it? Oh man. No, not if you don't want me. Yeah. To. No. Do It'll whatever you, you want. I don't care. I don't. Pff. Johnny's bigoted oh, the to way, people who choose the wrong answer in Would You Rather. Speaking of which, um, we have a retraction to pull. We have we said I said something incorrect mm. in a previous podcast. Yeah, and and uh, we got we we um. So we got straightened out. Yes, exactly. By my father, I told a story way back. This would have been which did surprise this me. Been, this story um, March is when I said I used to bond with my dad, driving around splashing people with puddles. He claims that that did not happen, and we rather talked about it, and we said, wouldn't that be funny if we got these people? And you know what? I'm just going to have to go from, you know, I I seem to remember things differently. It's amazing, though, how memories can impl- implant themselves when, yeah. the, when it talking been, about something happening was so vivid. It could have been that it was like we did talk about it, and then at a different time, I did it with my friends or something. And the whole idea was 
Spo- you know sponsored i was gonna say sponsored spawned. by my dad spawned <laughs> by uh, my conversation with my father could totally have been the case but the, talking about it and doing it are two totally different things yeah so we just need to straighten out that john did not actually do it no he, he's not that kind of person he's a trickster kind of guy but he's definitely not like ruin your day kind of person no. at all no and i'm sorry dad for b- b- making that come across i mm-hmm. retract it truly sorry so i don't know if that means anything to the, all the millions of people that listen they're like johnny's dad is actually wow. not as mean as we thought he was well maybe i will give him that call that i've been waiting on maybe i will send him that text message he's a nice man my computer's making a lot of noise right now can you hear that i think it's because it's sitting on a leather chair it's the fan's not working so well really yeah oh Got to have it on a flat surface. You know, I used to do tech support for laptops, right? Really? Yep. Computers run hot when they're not on a flat, hard surface. Well, well, well. The there we go. Fan so well. Techie, techie, Carly. Yep. Techie Come to me wife. to troubleshoot your uh, HP Pavilion laptop PC 27 from like 2002. <laughs> uh, that's a 1-800-techiecarly.com. Uh, oh, I troubleshot so many pe- she laptops. She troubleshot? <laughs> Did you just say trouble chat? <laughs> I think I actually said it on a oh phone call once. Really? Trouble chat? <laughs> oh, I'm going to trouble chat this for you. No, I trouble chat. It's like past tense. Wouldn't past it be, tense wouldn't it be trouble shoot? Trouble shot. Trouble shot, you right. Know, but it's <laughs> an honest mistake. Trouble chat. <laughs> That's like when you, it's like you're in trouble and then, oh, and then you fart. And then, <laughs> you poop because you're, you're in trouble. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've never had a trouble shot. Uh, I have a keen memory of, though, when I pooed my pants in front of people. Oh, my gosh. Tell me about it. Okay. Uh, we were doing Blue Angels, and it was like... Blue Angels. Can you explain what those are? They're airplanes uh, that fly <laughs> in air shows. <laughs> Actually, that's what they are. For but, real? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, Did you guys make up the term Blue Angel? No. Oh. It's, uh, I was so surprised that you didn't know what a Blue Angel was. Blue Angel is when you light your farts on fire. That's Which what, actually, I was so amazed and bewildered and dazzled <laughs> by you just learning love, that it farts actually light on fire. I was with your family when I learned this. Oh, uh, this is a funny thing about uh, this is coming after a conversation with my family about you got to be careful <laughs> with what you say. And now we're like, okay, let's talk about us farting into lighters. <laughs> and we don't have to talk about it. No, but we just did talk about it. Well, we haven't explained <laughs> that. Okay. Who Anyways, or where? We're what? around our family camping. That is the. <laughs> the who, who where and, and what where and the what is we did uh, blue angels and uh i did it and then in front of everybody pooed a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't that one was no I? and i ran to the outhouse and i was like oh i really hope they don't tell this to people oh, that's so funny it, it reminded uh, me of that story you hope they don't tell this to people and then you just talk about it on the podcast i don't care so. <laughs> i'll say anything on here confidence is how about key. the time that you peed your pants before you jumped into the water that's not embarrassing that's, thing, that's funny i just i never never knew about that all that the being time a thing. you know it's called dry peeing dry <laughs> there's all these weird camping yeah, you, things involving like farts and peeing that you never that it's might just the, the premise of that which was so hilarious because you just did it in front of my entire family did, last did summer. I? you're standing on this log before jumping into the river and like my all my brothers and sisters are there because it's the family reunion oh yeah and you're standing there and you're like hey guys i'm gonna pee my pants <laughs> you just you just do it you just stand there but the thing is is you're standing on the log that we all jump off of so we're gonna stand in your pee when we go to jump off then you'll it'll wash off oh man then you jumped in the water so it was like oh i peed my pants but now i jump in the water it's called a dry pee something something about that makes me feel like your pee sets in dry clothing and then it doesn't get fully washed out like are you actually washing it with soap and scrubbing it the way a washing machine does when you go into the river those shorts are gonna smell like pee later but they do they have you ever been like oh those pee shorts i've no? thought about it i don't know what shorts you were wearing you know, it's so funny i'm so desensitized with poo poo and pee pee because <laughs> of having a baby so many times just having poo on me like there's i'm a, still pretty grossed out by poo because he poops on the potty a lot of the time so yeah, i don't have yeah. to deal with that but, much but more so if poo gets on us it's just like well why wash it off <sighs> speak for yourself i just, just like, did ah, it's under my fingernails you know what? almost every single time i speak it's for, for myself <laughs> Touché. But uh, speaking of poo, this morning took Forrest to the park. 
and I uh, was on the swing set, and there was some white on it, and it was like, touch with my finger, bird poo all over the seats, and it was just on my finger. Oh, and what did you feel about that? I was just like, well, clean it off. I wasn't like, oh, shoot, there's yeah. poo poo on my finger. Yeah. That was a that was that's I thought that was gonna be more of an interesting anecdote than it became, <laughs> but it ended up just being like, yeah, I got poo poo on my finger. Well, it made me it bird. made me thoughtful about what what I would be like in that situation because I'm still really grossed out by cat poop. It's so gross. Yeah, cat poop is dog poop is exponentially worse. Oh, dog so poop gross. on a shoe. Oh my goodness, it's the grossest. Although I hate maybe not. It. Yeah, but baby poop. Especially other people's babies, their poop still is really gross. Forrest's poop actually smells like strawberries a lot of the times. Because but he still loves smells strawberries. Like poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it still yeah. is it still is poop and so it still grosses me out. Yeah, poo is gross, everybody. Mm-hmm. This just in. Poo is gross. Just That's, uh, your baby's poo is just the least gross uh, out of all the poo. Yeah, but it's still gross. Um across the board, I think poo You know, I gotta say if there's any animal's poo who I think is actually kind of is interesting gross. is goats. Goat poop is so freaking fascinating. Really? Have you ever seen it? No, I've not observed goat poo poo. It comes out like <laughs> the shape of a human poop, except it's a whole bunch of pellets, and they all break apart as it falls. The sh- the human poop shape falls to the ground and breaks into a whole bunch of like hard contained little oh, pellets. Oh, it's like fractal poops. Yeah, fractal. Poops. Do they just keep breaking it's down. It's so interesting. Yeah. Huh. Goats. Goats Very are clean interesting. Poops. A coworker of mine wants to get a hiking goat. You can get goats that just like a hiking goat. Yeah, they're just kind of sherpas and they just carry your bags for you. And they're like really good at like. They're not hiking. just sherpas, okay? Goats are your friends. Well, yeah, they're like dogs. They're so cute. Hey, sherpas are can be friends too. Yeah, I'm sure. But like I'd they be just, you said they just carry your stuff. No, like, oh, that's I, all I, you're I, good for, goat. No, it was like they just carry your like that's they just do that. It's oh, not just so it's, cool. It's like they. It's like. He just stands there being a cool dude, you know, mm-hmm. or like, that's a bad, bad example. <laughs> he just loves playing the piano. It's like that. It's mm-hmm. like, they just carry your they stuff. Just, yeah. It's not like they just carry your stuff. Okay, I get you. The old, it's not you, the only thing. And then like, and he's like, yeah, go camping. And it's like, you get fresh milk for your coffee in the mornings. <laughs> just From like, your goat? Yeah. Well, it depends thing. on if it had a baby recently. You can't just milk any goat. Oh, I didn't think about that. It's not like automatically they've always got milk. You think I always have milk? Yeah. I mean, right now I do. But <laughs> <laughs> Bad example. Oh, oh, I yeah. do, but then some other girl on the street, you can't just be like, give me some milk. Give me some milk. Maybe. Forrest tries it, but it doesn't work. Does he? Is he like, give oh, me yeah. some milk? No, whose boobs was he grabbing? Your mom's. He's Your like, mom was nah, here staying nah. with us. Oh, Forrest. Oh, he did that to our friend too, who has Naughty her boy. own baby that she nurses. It was so funny. I told you about this. Yes. He went up to Leora and uh, just like he had this kind of coy look on his face as he kind of looks at her and goes, nah. And then just like kind of says it like sideways to her like, nah, raises nah. his eyebrows and then and then just kind of like saunters oh, away a little bit and looks back like, huh? Hey, you want to <laughs> you want to feed me? Uh, so oh, man. funny. But uh, boobs aren't the same thing to babies as it is to us adults, you know. It's just like, hey, you got yeah. food too, just like my mom. I saw you were giving it to that baby. Can I have some of that That one? It'd be you like... You know, I have to say, for a kid, that was actually really polite because most of the time he just takes what he wants. So the right. fact that he asked her, that was pretty respectful. He's like, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. I imagine, like, it would be... What would be the equivalent? Just like a six-pack of, uh, like, a, of beers on a on a cold on a cold day on a hot day it's what like that's what nursing is to a baby no i'm just trying to imagine something because you're like boobs are different for a baby than they are to like men who like mm-hmm. boobs oh my gosh well it's but different like, what would be so many people that's why it's still people are so embarrassed to nurse in public and stuff like boobs are tucked away then you know get just, them out of there except for the the you know um Décolletage. What do you call it? I don't have it anymore. I don't even have it. What? It's the thing that I don't have with boobs that a lot of people have. Cleavage. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Did you forget the name? Did you forget the word cleavage? I did. Yeah. And you called it décolletage. Décolletage. I don't know. It's a French word that I've only ever read before, so I know I'm saying it totally wrong. For real? Yeah. Oh my gosh. What? You forgot the word cleavage. Yeah, I did. 
That's so funny. Because I don't have it. I'm gonna call but, it. I mean, I'm gonna call it decolletage. There you now. go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine by me. Decolletage. Well, I, I mean, only is when it, it like, comes up. But like, when does it ever come up with me? That's true. The but lie. but yeah, people just have, you know, boobs are tucked away, <laughs> except they're just like propped up, and their cleavage is showing, and it's their it's all just sexualized, and then people pull their boobs out to feed a baby, and people are like, oh my goodness, but Shame. it's like the most essential, like, I mean, obviously there's baby formula now, but it's just like one of the most like baseline human instincts to feed your baby. Yeah. And it's so gross to so many but people. Some or just people... Not, maybe not gross all the time, but just like it throws people off. It rattles them or they don't know what to do about it. And I've been one of those people in the past where you're just like, do I look, do I look away? Do I like try not to make eye contact or do I make full eye contact so that it's not uncomfortable? So they know I don't mind and I'm cool with this, but but you're still obviously not that cool with it because you're kind of uncomfortable and you're trying to think about what right. how you should behave. It's kind of like it's just because boobs are so put away all the time. We don't see enough people. Well, what just would breastfeeding. you? What would you prefer? If you boobs would, everywhere, no, breastfeeding but, no, babies. But like if somebody in public, just eye contact. Do you want people to take a look? Like, what would be an ideal interaction while you're breastfeeding? Um, you know, some kind of like, I think the having like um a respectful look away like they're like they're scanning the room for something else but they're still chatting with me and and you know being smiley and cash and whatever but they don't have to be staring right at me but then they can look at me and we can chat but you know that that initial look away like oh oh, okay you're doing that that's cool because in the beginning when your baby's about to nurse you just nipple out you know right you're just but totally once they're on you, it's fine it's just it's basically you know, your boob tucked in a shirt, except it's in a baby's mouth. So at that mm-hmm. point, you're not really going to see anything. Have you ever gotten any like, like preteens being like, oh my gosh, like hmm. just trying to look at the corner of their, you know, because I remember when I, when I was I at that so, age, actually. when boobs were just like, oh, like they were like everything. There was like, oh, I love boobs. I try and be, that's the one thing that I try and be really, I mean, I'm always still pretty, I, I'm quite affected by it. Yeah. Um, picking up on what, you know, if people are uncomfortable or something. So sometimes yeah. I will just leave the room to nurse, but right. especially if there's younger boys around. But like, you know, not young, young like boys, but like super horny, exactly. teen, young teenagers. Once they're like starting to get around the time where they're discovering, you know, what's in their pants, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do them a favor. Yeah. And not make this really uncomfortable for them. Yeah. Because like, I remember when I was at that age, should be just see like a breast feeding. If I ever came across it, I'd be like, oh, Mm-hmm. Like it was just like, oh, there's a boob over there being used. Mm-hmm. It was felt crazy. Yeah, that that would be that's something that I'm always thinking about. But I mean, Forrest always. is a lot older now, so he can go a long time without nursing. So it's really easy for me to just pick and choose when it's like, nope, not right here, bud. But when he was younger, that was the times that you know you just pull out your, you just gotta have like a burpee cloth or whatever right. and put it over you and just. Not anymore. He'd be like, get that out of me. Yeah. Get that out of my face. <gasps> What's on my head? Get it out of here. <laughs> now he just this. sticks his hand in my shirt all the time. Yeah. Just to make sure it's still there, right? <gasps> How right, long do there. you think you'll go? When is it? When does it become weird to breastfeed? It was crazy when we met that one lady in Hawaii who breastfed her daughter till she was seven, seven. years old. Holy Could you imagine? Holy She obviously <laughs> didn't have any other kids because... Yeah, but do you... Like, I remember being seven. I remember... Just like having like in full intelligent conversations with your I parents. I remember being four. Yeah, but like when you're seven, you can have a like a good regular conversation with you know. Obviously, you're you know mm-hmm. in grade what three? No, grade two. Mm-hmm. And you're just like okay, you understand every most things, and then you're like okay, time for. F- Time for sucky sucky. Oh, that's not a bad. I, hate, I don't want to say that. <laughs> Everybody for, has different words. And for, you know, people's terms for breastfeeding can be weird to other people. But you it's just some, all the same thing. And it's like she described it as like beautiful. There's all these be- amazing health benefits. And it's true like you because. Uh, your what body is it? tailors it for your baby. For yeah. Your kid. And it's like, what is it where you, you know, if you're getting sick or if the baby is getting sick, then, you know, that you, contact the your body like a force a second starts nursing your body's like oh it detects the sickness and it kind of comes up with the antibodies mm-hmm. to you know yeah i used to think it was weird for people to nurse their kids you know to a certain age i remember actually saying before 
if your kid can ask for it, then you've been breastfeeding them too long. And this was like me young. I didn't know what the heck I was talking about. I was early 20s. I was probably echoing right. something that I heard somebody else say before. Before it wasn't even like it now. I didn't even have I don't think I actually felt that strong opinion in my heart. It was more just like for the sake of having a strong opinion about something. But right. now that I'm nursing Forrest, he's 15 months now and um I don't know. There's just so many complexities to a relationship with your kid that you can just tell this is so the right thing for yeah. us, for he and I. Yeah. It's a really nice bond and he's still getting tons of nutrients. The great thing is actually when he's not, he's on days that he's not eating very well, like he just won't eat things that I'm giving to him. I know that he's still getting a huge amount of what he needs from me. Right. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. And also I'm just, I'm, that's one way that we're really, really able to bond and I'm able to comfort him a lot of the times, which I have no problem nursing him for comfort. I'm the type of person, I shouldn't say the type of person, I have been influenced to take on this stance with breastfeeding Forrest that anytime he wants it, if he wants it for comfort or he hurt himself or, you know, he's tired or when people say like, your baby's using you for a pacifier, it doesn't matter. I will just let him feel like that's a safe place and he can trust that it is there for him whenever he needs it and he doesn't take advantage of it. Yeah. No, he doesn't. I mean, it sometimes it looks sometimes like Sometimes his hands are in my yeah. freaking shirt all the time, but... <laughs> and that's fine. I don't know. I never really had an opinion about it. I just... I thought it was weird. I, I don't know. The, uh, most of parenting was weird to me because it was just unknown. Now it just feels so normal. So it's like, yeah, I think... But I don't know how you how know, late how how old is too old to breastfeed in your opinion now? Uh, I have no opinion about it. Anymore. Seven? None is at all. Is that too old? I don't know. <gasps> I why would I? No. Now I'm of the opinion like why would I care how long somebody else breastfeeds their kid for? Why right. does that? We don't all have to be the same. And what works for some people doesn't have to work for us. It's not like because they did it that way. Now we feel like we need to do it that way. Or we totally disagree with the way they did it. It doesn't have to be like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like since becoming a parent, I've realized that um, we don't need to, two things, we don't need to do the things the same as everyone else. They're they're definitely not always going to work for us the way they work for other people. And um, we don't need to know how things are going to go in the future. Yeah. I remember when we were, when we were like before we had a kid we were just always trying to predict how things were going to go make a plan right make a plan plan and predict and and prepare ourselves for how things were going to be in the future you prepare so much and now i'm just like why prepare when you get there like adrenaline kicks in and you you get really resourceful and you get really good at coming up with creative ideas of what to do now or if you don't you still get through it and you just like yeah, cross just that like, bridge when you get there. Just like when you go out camping, don't don't prepare. <laughs> just like just it's go show up, thing. and then you can just make your own shelter. Just figure it out when you get there. You'll find a water source. You'll find a water source. You'll exactly. go hunting. You eat some berries. It's fine. It's it's, you don't like need that. to prepare. But no, I I think with having a kid, you. Just cross, have a kid. You cross that bridge when you get there. Yeah. I mean, okay, not not to do with things like I don't know financial situations and right and figuring out where you want to live eventually and, and things like right. that. Those are still things you can plan, but I just mean like fretting about what am I going to do when he's two and he's going through terrible twos and you know the the fretting about the future thing or the breastfeeding thing. Like I don't I don't need to have a plan for that. I'll figure that. What I I do pl- have a plan. I think I'm probably going to breastfeed him <sighs> until he's two. Two. But. I don't have an opinion on how other how long other people breastfeed their babies, and I am not against future Carly deciding that she wants to breastfeed longer if that came up. I just kind of doubt that it will be like that. I doubt that I'm going to feel that way by the end of this two-year thing. Maybe I'll breastfeed him a little bit longer than two years and slowly find ways to wean him off. It's not going to be like just a hard, rigid, you're cut off kid type of thing. It's just going to be going with the flow a little bit, but around two years is the cutoff is what I'm imagining, but it doesn't have to be, you know, solid plans all the time. He's going to be upset about that. That's for sure. You, my mom told me a really good story actually of how she weaned my, my older sister, her first, oh. my mom's firstborn. And weaning means. M- means they are weaning off the boob. 
they're not nursing anymore. So she, I think Jesse was just over two and my mom had to go away for a weekend. She'd already been like really weaning Jesse and only letting her nurse, like, I don't know, I think in the evenings or something to, to go to sleep. And, but so Jesse would still try and nurse and my mom would be like, no, they're all gone. It's all gone. But Jesse would still go for it. And obviously it wasn't all gone. So it was like, you're lying to me. And so my mom had to go away on a weekend vacation. And when my mom got back, my sister Jessie grabbed for it again. And my mom said, all gone. And she wanted to try it. So she tried. And then there was nothing there. And so Jessie just went, all gone. All and gone. just shrugged her shoulders and just went, all gone. That's it. Yep. So, okay. <laughs> it's all gone. Huh. You just get them used to the fact, I think. So I don't know. But this is the type of thing where it's like, when people say, how are you going to do it? I'm like, I'll figure it out when I get there. That's true. Like we never really we we didn't do any sleep training. I mean, we didn't we didn't really do anything that requires discipline like sleep training. We we're just kind of that's our plan. We just yeah, we some, just go with the flow. Some people they just feel like it's they need to do that. Yeah, and and you know what? We we kind of did suffer for it. We Oh, for sure in some ways. Yeah, like bed sharing isn't isn't like all peaches and cream like no, where you're once you go through sleep training, you put him down. It's like, woohoo, he's down. Let's just like... For some people though. But I, I mean, the question with sleep training is that a lot of babies do that. But then we've heard about Addie where she would be up, like especially for her naps, they put her down and then she just doesn't nap sometimes. And th- sometimes you're like, okay, if we had s- done sleep training with Forrest, would he still be going through that stuff? And then we just, instead of having him in bed, now we're getting up and going to his room all the time. Right. Yeah. That's not fun. Mm-hmm. I would hate that. So it's really hard to say because not every baby's the same as each other. Just like not every person in the world is the same as each other. In fact, not one person in the world is the same as each other. Yeah. You know, what's funny about kids um, is how we like to compare them and we're so surprised when babies are different. And that's a common thing we talk about, which is so ridiculous because of course every baby is different. Every human is different. But for some reason, we just like want them to follow some type of, you know, format. Yeah, but they really don't. And it's like, I've had so many conversations. It's like, oh, they're so every baby is different. I've we. It's, <laughs> it's like so true. We, I'm, we're I'm always having that realization with people. It's like, isn't that crazy? Every baby is different. What? It's like you they're treating mice? babies as a species. Like this is what the species culture is like. And yeah. It's like it's not like that. Just because no. they're young doesn't mean that they are. A different species. Yeah. They're still humans, and humans are very complex and different. At least I hope he's still a human. I don't know. Man, I'm nervous on the... He's, like, so close to falling off the bed. <laughs> he fell off the bed today. I heard it. <gasps> I wasn't he, around. It did was he fall, with him. Did he fall on the mattress? Nope. I heard the bonk. Oh, man. He was pretty sad. It that would happens. be sad if I fell off the bed. I don't know even and We don't have a really he's... high bed, FYI. Yeah, it's Listeners quite low. who think that... It's you, incredibly how unsafe. How you talk so callously about your poor baby falling off the bed? He's he's 15 this, months now. He knows how to get off the bed. Just but fine. this, yeah, and the side of the bed he's on right now, there's like a little mattress on the floor there. So if he does, it's fall, not even little. It's like a full-on thick crib mattress. So it's like a fell, baby like a mattress. Yeah. But I'm watching him, and he's like, he is close. One little roll, and he's off. That's a pretty tough roll, though. Look how he's positioned. That's the opposite way that he would roll right yeah. now. Yeah, and that's a rude awakening right there. I think it'd be pretty fun. I've had. I bet he wouldn't wake up. Really? No mm-hmm. way. There's no way. No, wouldn't. actually, my sister, my older sister, told me a oh, story oh, about oh. my. There we go. It's like he heard us, and he was wow. like, "Oh, you guys are right. I should get away from the edge of the bed." He just rolled over wow. away from the edge. That's amazing. I had faith in him. Yeah, he's just like, "I'm too close to this edge here." Wow. Well, good for him. My older sister told me a story about my nephew Josh sleeping in the bed and she heard she's downstairs and he she hears this thunk and she goes upstairs and he fell out of this bed i know the bed she's talking about because it's like my grandparents old brass knobbed bed and it's so high and he fell off the bed onto the the carpeted ground and was still sleeping (laughs) oh my gosh (gasps) oh some people they can just sleep through anything i apparently used to be like that i used to sleep still are like that really yeah, you sleep you sleep like a rock sometimes. But then I wake up out of nowhere and I sh- and sometimes and you start I, saying things. But it's weird because like sometimes I think it's just my memory 
Like, I think I do wake up, but I just don't remember it. Because yeah. I'll, I'll have, like, a rough sleep, but it felt like I slept the whole way through. Mm. But then I'm just like, no, I was up in the middle of the night, and I'll have these, these vague memories. Right. It's kind of like when you're blackout drunk. It's like yeah. at the time, you do you are experiencing it. You're there. It's just that later you can't remember it. Yeah. Uh, sleep is weird. But it's a similar phenomenon. Yeah. Sleep is like we're, we're practicing for death. <laughs> why do you say that well because it's just like we're rehearsing like every night we're like okay where i'm gonna enter into this different i i, I listen i'm saying this because i just listened to this on a pete holmes podcast and <laughs> <laughs> where they're just like yeah sleep is kind of like you're rehearsing for when you die i thought it sounded like a quote or something yeah because when you die you're just like you're going into like a different realm and mm-hmm. sleep is kind of like that's like this unknown place where you it's like it's like we could have all these weird memories of it that we can't really remember and it's like they're like often you really strange. It's so weird. Like you, Do you ever get the feeling when you have a dream and you can remember it? You actually can remember it so vividly. And as you're trying to describe it, the the memory of it is coming up perfectly, but the words that are coming out aren't describing oh. the dream. Oh, yeah. You're like, no, this, this, oh, it's so easy to conjure up in my brain, but to actually say words to explain what this felt yeah. like and what even it looked like. All is... of my dreams, most of my dreams I can't talk about. And I don't want to talk about. It feels like I'm just like, I can't, I can't talk about it. In my, it, I, it just I dumbs want it down to so too bad. much. It, like the, it boils it down too much, doesn't it? Yeah. There's too uh, much to say. No, it's just like I physically can't. And it's like I'm stubborn about it. Hmm. And like sometimes you'll be like, did you have any dreams? And I'll be like, yeah. And Rick would, and I just don't answer you. I'm just mm. like, I'm so tired. And I'm just like, I don't want to. You don't have to. And I couldn't, I, even if I tried, even though in my mind I'm like, yes, I know. I can see it. I can feel it. It's more of a feeling than anything. Remember how last night I told you about the dream I had? No. About the... Um, we had a second baby. You didn't tell me this. I did too. When this morning you were you were kind of sleepy. Yeah, no. See, in the morning it started off. Our friend Danielle McTaggart was uh like a, a kind of like a vampire zombie person, but she was still herself, and it was in a music video. But she was like chasing after me for some Ooh. reason, and I went through this door where there were so many shoes. And I was trying to find the right shoes that would help me run away from her. But you know when like you're you're trying oh, to run man. in a dream, but you can't run. Yeah. But it was like I'm trying to put these shoes on and I can't put them on. And I'm like, oh, oh man. man. But I went through like I was in a hall and I went through one door, so I know like she's got to go through a bunch of doors in the hallway to try and find me. So I've got a bit of time. So I'm trying oh, to get these so shoes funny. on, you know. And then finally I get these shoes and I'm running away from her. But then instead of it being her, it's like we have a second <clears> baby. That's the same age as Forrest that we like adopted, and he's a zombie baby. So or like she, a, she turned a into a zombie baby. baby. It wasn't like she turned into a zombie baby. It was like that's what she, she was, was all like along. That all, so you think on. your friend maybe? Let's unpack this. Hmm. So it starts out with our friend um, chasing after you. She's trying to get something out of you. Mm-hmm. She's trying to get your blood, mm, your life blood. Something. Or she she's she, sucking she something she out of me. You know what? I think this sounds like breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what is it it's not blood mm. uh, she wants your milk <laughs> but then when you stop like you're scared at first and then when you stop and then you're like wait i shouldn't be running she's just a baby no all of a sudden but is that i was in a is? different place at this point like i ran away from her i got away and now i was going to my baby who needed to nurse but also I needed to like introduce to Forrest because they're both my babies and one of the babies could bite and turn the other baby also into a So zombie. is this playing off of your feeling Slash of like vampire. a little bit of like slight violation when Forrest wants a nurse too much all the time and is like grabbing at you and stuff and you're like, no. You yeah, know? he's becoming kind of aggressive sometimes. And yeah, so, so it maybe could it's, be that. it's pulling from that and mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, you know what? You know what? Yeah, I should get give this up to you even though you're sucking my life so my life source from me i still like love friend, you and want to nurture you and we're gonna get through this together <laughs> yeah and then combined with how does that tie in with danielle are you just like is that how you view your friendship with her <laughs> <laughs> definitely not he was like oh you're you're taking things from me i'm gonna run oh but wait I you're actually just think- a big baby and i should just i should just be, have compassion for your babiness 
Is that how you feel about Danielle? That's how I feel about her, for sure. Wow, she better not be listening to this podcast. I actually think that some dreams just start off like improv, where they don't, there's not like significance between, like in the timeline of it, in how something turns into another thing. It started off like a music video. Right. Like just riffing off some type of entertainment. You know, you've been working on a lot of music videos and sharing interesting ideas. So it just started off with that. It was just like entertainment, but then it oh, turned interesting. into. Oh, interesting. And then it kind of be like, oh, there's a theme here. Okay, mm-hmm. what's, let's let's figure out the theme and run, chase after this idea. I really don't think that dreams um, conform to our um, logical constructs here in this yeah. realm. I think that dreams are so different and they're so, we can't, like the laws of our world are different in those, in that place. And everything is so upside down in a way that we can't possibly imagine. And so when we re- recall those dreams, it's our brain just being like filling in the gaps. It's kind of like Mad Libs. Mm-hmm. Where it's like we have this real adventure in this different dimension from when we're sleeping. And then when we get come back... You can't we, take it with you. If, you. if you're good at memory remembering dreams, it's just your brain is... You're just like better at associating things in this translating. world with those. yeah translating you yeah. know where it's like for me sometimes i have no words i have it in my in my eyes i'm in that transition period and i'm like a lot of the times it is with different being it is with there are different entities in my dream but I, they're not people they're just like spirits i mm-hmm. guess and then but i can't be like a person was this or i was with so and so maybe sometimes but it could be like I don't know. I often think maybe we dream in archetypes and we associate those archetypes with movie stars hmm. or people like really distinct people that represent sure. those type of That could energies. totally be. Yeah, or, that's really interesting. But then there's some dreams that like, remember how I, I, every, I don't know, every few months I have dreams about you doing something that makes me so, so upset and so angry because you won't listen to me that I'm just like screaming at you. It's so funny. Every time you tell me those dreams, I'm like, you're you're trying to tell me something that in real life is bothering you, or like you're letting your dreams kind of tell you tell me how you really feel about the way I've been behaving. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I mean, I can see why you would feel that way, but I mean, whenever I tell you those dreams, I'm just like, what the heck? It's like it it gives me insight. It's like, oh, are you actually is that how you're feeling about me? these days are you feeling like i'm draining you or are you feeling like i'm not listening to you and i'm like oh huh it does make you think yeah huh. makes me think it makes me go huh hmm. maybe this reality isn't it yeah sometimes you don't listen to me so that becomes very <laughs> frustrating for me <laughs> yeah but it's not, all- it's not out of choice it's just it's the tunnel vision thing yeah where you get tunnel vision in one direction yeah but that's okay we all have our I things love, yeah. I'm really scatterbrained I, I have a hard time focusing my attention in one spot in between my I have very intense focus when I do but this, I think we're, we really relate to each other in that way actually Ooh, there's a yawn how long have we been doing this for we should start timing this we should put a timer on that times this for an exact hour and when it dings we have to wrap the conversation up in a neat, with a neat bow in 30 seconds there's two minutes Two minutes for what? Until it's an hour. Oh. Luckily, the recording software that we record this on also keeps the time. Well, well, the well, well. The technology How these do they days. How come up with these things? Well, I'm ready to wrap it up. Yeah, that I've, was nice. I have some work to do tonight. Oh, yeah, you do too. Working hard or hardly working. Your birthday's coming up next week. We're going to celebrate. Hooray. Woo-hoo. Another year closer to dying. <laughs> That's morbid. Yeah. Uh, but you only have one year left of being in your 20s. Yeah, that's true. I live it. And then you won't have that excuse anymore. No. And then you can say, man, I'm in my 30s. I'm partying it up. Partying it up. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going. All right. Well, I love you, honey. This was a good love conversation. You too. Great job. Thank you, you too. See you next time Ta-da. on the Merry Mint Podcast. Um, www.carlyandjohnny.com and visit us on on YouTube at Carly and Johnny 
videos extreme we'll talk to you next week talk to you next week and don't forget to subscribe subscribes and uh here's a plug <laughs> go go fresh hello fresh oh yeah hello fresh not a good plug no wouldn't do it would not do it thanks joey for the and josie for the free week of hello fresh but it was not worth it oh um, well unless I mean, it hello was worth fresh, it because it was free food but unless hello fresh wants it. to change our minds about it i don't I, but this how is would more they? of an anti-plug first how? of all here's the real we're just deal. opening up a can of worms right now at the end too of much podcast. plastic oh they package I'm, I'm every all, single thing i'm kind of a, i'm a, can a we explain lot, what hello fresh is first it's kind of yeah it's where they give you they like pre-make meals for you to cook a with. box is sent to your door filled with um three different bags that have ingredients for three different meals for three nights of the week you know it is wonder it it is awesome to not have to think or all that kind of stuff you still i have just to chop you still have to um prepare all of the food yourself but they provide the ingredients and they provide the recipe yeah but it was like the mayonnaise came in like eight little pack, little packets. Like to go packets. And then packets like you get your like McDonald's or something. Vinegar in these little plastic. It's like it's like uh, even like the garlic. That's like one clove yeah. of garlic is has its own plastic package. So and, it's like that is the one thing that bothers me. And working with Ocean Wise and like plastic awareness, understanding what our plastic is doing to the ocean, to the world, and it's like we need to just like cut out all single use plastics out of our lives, and mm-hmm. that's like. And That's instead, cool. it's just more convenience. I think like yeah. the con- our, us needing convenience so much in our lives is the thing that is robbing the earth of all of its resources. It's going to bring it down if we don't stop just taking and taking for our convenience. Yeah. Sa- yeah. So That's... I will buy broccoli at the grocery store and I will not put it in the plastic bag. Ooh. I will put it right down on the conveyor belt and, and it fine. will make the uh, teller person cringe a little bit. And that's fine by me. I don't care about any of that stuff anymore. Mm-mm. There's so many little conveniences that I now don't live with. Like most plastic bags or straws or cups and everything. And it's fine. It's like for the good that it does, it's like the slight inconvenience oh, that it puts on your life is we just, just not need even to start taking on inconveniences for yeah. the sake and it's all the little things we so, just hey, gotta start doing it. Hello Fresh, if you're listening, I will s I would support HelloFresh if they made a movement to use less placket plastic packaging. And give us more sauce. More sauce. Yeah. It's actually like, on make both this, meals. Make this marinade and then it's yeah. just like my stir fry wasn't saucy. And both meals, I would good say, have a lack of sauce. Mm-hmm. And we're saucy people. Pretty we saucy. We love the sauce. But, I mean, even for non-saucy people, I think it wasn't that saucy. Bring the sauce, Hello Fresh. Bring on the sauce. We want to see some Hello Sauce. We should start a rival company called Hello Sauce. <laughs> and we just, we provide no, really pa- saucy no meals. plastic packaging. And our meals just have so much sauce. Basically, we just have really rich soups. That's all we do. We just provide soup and we call it sauce. Oh my gosh. Soup? It's just a bunch of sauce. Oh, I love soup. <laughs> Wait, do you want to have some Does, cold soups this summer? Yeah. Cold soups. But is thing. It, am, I, am I right about that? This is a revelation. Soup is just a bunch of sauce. <laughs> really rich. Well, like a re- like, think about really like rich. A, think about like a really rich soup, like a chowder. You could put that on spaghetti. Oh, yeah. Well... It's not quite thick enough. Sauce is usually thicker than soup. But when you have like a bisque, a you know, bisque. when you and it's kind of like a soup, but that's actually like a sauce. Soup is kind of like sauce. Yeah. Maybe this is just a dumb thing. I'm not even stoned. <laughs> you just I think like, I'd be more blown. blown. I think I'd be so much more into that idea if I would smoke pot, which is also a thing I haven't been into. Mhm. It's a downer. Yeah. A little bit. Which sometimes I like. Yeah, I, very, it's been a while. Very it's been a while. The last time I can't remember the last time I smoked pot, and I was like, "This is a good thing." You know, Johnny, we actually said "talk to you next week" like three times to each other, and we're still going. I just thought of a few more things to say. <laughs> You're so cute. Okay. Um, well, I love you, honey. Love you too. Well and done. we're we're over an hour now, so that's yeah. it. 
Okay, well, we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Okay, that's really it for Merriment this week now. I hope you felt great joy in hanging out with us, because I know we did. And if you want to get updated every time a new episode comes out, you can do so easily. Hit that telltale subscribe button in iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app. Or alternately, enter your email at carlyandjohnny.com. Just get us straight to your inbox. Merriment is audio engineered by Johnny Jansen, edited and produced by me, Carly Jansen, and theme music is written and produced by me and Johnny. I know, that's a crazy high whistle I have. If you like what you hear, why don't you share us while you're at it? Just copy link, paste into your preferred medium, write clever caption like, I love these dorks, click the post button, voila, you are a duck. Your mother and I love you very much.